Hi, this is Oliver Lucanus from Below Water. Uh, today I wanted to show the first video of some old stuff that was shot in the 1990s. Now, all that stuff is on mini DV tapes, so uh, we don't actually have digital stuff. And it took a long time to digitize it because back then video cameras had these kind of things. And now there are dongles that convert these and uh, we actually managed to digitize tapes. So today we're going to look at the Rio Ventuari and ca catching uh, stingrays in the wild. Uh, something to remember that mini DV is about equivalent to 720p. So when watching these videos, please don't make them full screen. Uh, a video that's about 30 centimeters or 12 inches should give a decent resolution so it doesn't look too grainy. The Rio Ventuari is one of the larger tributaries of the Orinoco. It enters the Orinoco not far upstream of the Atavapu confluence. The Orinoco itself is a white water river with not much visibility, and the Atavapu is a black water river, clear but tea stained and very dark. The Ventuari is green in appearance and a lot clearer than the Orinoco, but it's very similar. The habitats here have the typical appearance of the middle Orinoco, with these gigantic round granite boulders and small islands. When you walk along the beaches, you can see hundreds of these divots where stingrays were active when the water was higher. You can see some of these earlier in the video. When the water is low and in the early months of the year, a lot of these beaches are exposed and there are lots of shallow places. Stingrays are everywhere in this area. Even during the day, you can see them feeding in the shallow water. Like this Orinoco Motoro. They even get stuck in larger puddles and then cross back into the main river if they are lucky. When I filmed this video, it's the first time that I saw Potamotrigon schroederi, the flower stingray. Look at the back portion of the disc near the tail. This is a recently healed wound from a piranha or another predator. When the disc heals completely and becomes more round again, the pattern never fully recovers and often makes these spots that are melted outwards towards the disc. All the fish here show this kind of damage. During the day, the rays are hard to approach and just about impossible to catch. This Potamotrigon orbingi is hunting in the shallow water, but it's about to show you why local people are so careful and why stingrays are one of the more feared animals in the Amazon. Once buried in the substrate, you can barely see the outline of the fish. If someone steps in this spot, their ankle or foot will be on the receiving end of the stinger which is not only incredibly painful, but also heals very slowly. It can take months, even if you have access to medical care, which a lot of people here do not. The flower stingray is the most beautiful, but also quite sensitive. Rays in general are less than ideal aquarium fish because they need a lot of room, fresh food like shrimp, worms and fish, and very good water conditions. The rays that come from these fast moving waters are also quite sensitive to depleted oxygen levels. Really think about keeping this sort of fish at home before you go out and buy stingrays. All of these fish also get close to one meter or three feet in diameter. Walking here in the shallows is quite dangerous because you have to be careful not to step on a ray while trying to find one to catch. And the best time to do this, of course, is at night with a dimmed flashlight. At night, the rays come close to shore to hunt fish that sleep here, like small kerosens, and in this case, a lot of geophagus. The idea is to light up the ray, then slowly walk towards it and scoop it up with a net. Every time you miss, you stir up more of the fine particles and makes it a little less safe to walk around. Stingrays are not so popular in the aquarium hobby anymore as most people realized how much work these fish are, and now most countries require CITES permits to export rays. But I think it is nice for everyone to see the fish here in their natural habitat along the Orinoco. Well, I hope you like the first of our legacy digitized videos. There are some 50 hours of video like this, and we will continue to go through it and put some of the highlights on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to this channel at the end of the video.